All right, here we go. Hey, what's going on? This is Marcos. Today, we're going to take a look at the difference between backlighting and edge lighting. And also, I'll talk a little bit about background lighting, which is this streak you're seeing back here. So first of all, I'm going to start off by turning off the lights. I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, I'm going to start off by turning off the backlight, the edge light, and then this is the background light. You see, now I'm just being lit by the Godox 60 watt with a 32 inch softbox and a grid. This is so I can control the lighting and there's only a little bit of spill over here. Since it has a grid, it's not really spilling over here on this area. Um, so for me, this looks a little bit too moody. Uh, the background is too dark. Uh, for most things that I'm doing, corporate and commercial work, it just doesn't call for this type of lighting. It's too dramatic. Uh, also, I would probably use a bigger light source uh, when I'm trying to light up a bigger scene. Uh, for, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm just using a small light source. But it's pretty close to me, so it's relatively soft lighting. So when I'm doing film shoots on location, the first thing I do is I turn off all the house lights and I see how much daylight is coming in. Usually spaces are pretty dark. So I have to bring in my own background lights or if the space is too big, I might have to turn up, uh, turn on some of the overhead lights. But I don't like doing that because those overhead lights are usually uh, mixed color temperatures. They're like these LED 4300 Kelvin uh, low CRI value. It, they just don't mix well with my daylight lighting. So I try to control the lighting by using all of my own lights. So after I turn on the key light, second Second thing I try to do is try to add my own background lights, such as this one. You can see there with this streak, it adds ambience to, um, it brings up the ambience of uh, the shadows over here on this area specifically, and it, it adds some interest. Uh, another thing you can do if you don't have background lights um, is just use uh, practicals, lamps, something to bring up the mood or the ambience uh, because you don't want it to be so dark back there. Uh, I know there's still some spots here where I would try to light it up or maybe use plants or, or whatever you can just to bring up uh, the mood. You know, you want to dress up the set as well. Okay, uh, if you don't have background lights, you don't. there's no time for that. Maybe just use the overheads and try to protect the, the spill from, from landing on your, on your talent. That way it doesn't mix with your own lights. So you would use a flag or something like that. Um, okay. So next thing is I'll do the etch lighting because this is usually what I end up using a lot of the time since it's easier to set up than a backlight. An etch light can sit off to a corner here on this corner. It's about 45 degrees the back of me and it's just edging me here. If I turn off the key light, where's that here, turn off the key light. You can see it's just hitting the side of my face and you probably want to prevent it from hitting your nose. So maybe have it a little bit more sighty. Uh, but this is, how I'll be, this is how I'm gonna face the camera. So that's not really hitting my nose. It's edging my shoulder and also the couch, this side over here, it's, uh, this right here. Um, that way it separates also the couch from the background. And you can totally run with this kind of lighting. This is what I end up using most of the time. However, I don't like that the key light, uh, it's Aperture 120D with the, with the long softbox. It's only daylight and I don't like how it's looking a little bit more blue here. So I'm gonna add a uh, gel to it to make it tungsten. So let's do that right now. All right, so real quick, I wanna show you the filters I'm using. These are the leaf filters, daylight to tungsten. In this case, I'll be putting a full CTO in front of the Aperture 120D to make it tungsten. There'll be links in the description to everything I'm mentioning here. Also, the soft box I'm using, uh, my friend let me borrow it, is from Impact. It's a uh, four foot long by like a foot wide. Um, that's, that's pretty cool light, so I have to return it today. Also, I want to mention that, uh, you know, I've been reading this book. Uh, I'm almost done with it, Shaping Light for Video by Alan Steinheimer. In the first couple of pages, he talks about uh, backlight versus etch light. And this is what inspired me, right, to to make a video about it because uh, I primarily like consuming YouTube content. I watch a lot of other YouTube uh, uh, channels that talk about video production and lighting. Uh, Meet the Gaffer is a great source. I'll have a link uh, to his channel down in the description. Uh, Alan is also from the Bay Area, just like Luke. Um, 
So great book. Uh, this is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money and I've, I've seen Alan Steinheimer at a conference, but I never actually talked to him. So I kind of don't know him. Uh, so it's a pricey book, $55, but it's well worth it. And definitely want to check it out if you want to learn more about lighting, if you're a gaffer or even a, a DP cinematographer or for your own YouTube channel. So definitely check it out. All right. So I put a, I believe a full CTO now makes this, this edge light look tungsten. And we, we are selling the idea that part of that back, that background light is hitting the side of my face. That's what's edging me as opposed to the daylight doesn't, we, we really can't sell the idea, right? It's like, where is that blue light coming from? Uh, so I think this looks much better. Uh, you can also turn up the intensity of that edge light, you know, make it more, look more artistic, uh, stylistic, or you can just have just very subtle. And so you can see the what it's doing exactly. Always try to turn off the main key light. And then I dial it to taste, right? Maybe a little bit more like that. And that looks good to me. Uh, all right, so that's the easiest thing to set up for me. Most of the time, this is what I'm doing is just for the sake of time, uh, I end up using an edge light. Uh, however, if there's time, resources, and money, I might set up a backlight, which requires more rigging. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. Turn that off and turn this one on. That's a backlight. This is the Falcon Eyes 18T. This is an older version. Uh, it's only daylight, and in order for me to dim it, I have to go up there to the control and turn on the knob. Uh, the only reason I could turn it on right now is because I have this control uh, wireless remote that only turns it on and off. I bought this at Home Depot, and you could also buy ones from Costco. I bought this that controls four switches. Uh, so it's nice to have controls, like this Godox has a remote control. The Aperture 120D has a remote. Uh, things that you might want to look out for when, you know, building out your lighting kit is, uh, for your background lights and your backlights is, uh, the ability to go by color and to dim it from a remote. That's super useful, especially if you're filming by yourself. So anyways, I like the roll off that the soft box has. And also I put on a grid and it has a softer roll off. You want to be careful with the way you place your lights. If you your subject is bald or has a receding hairline like I do, you see a lot of the shine. So you want to light it to the shoulders, hitting a little bit more of the back of your neck. And that way it only brushes the back of your head and only the hair, right? If a person has full set of hair, maybe you want to light it a little bit more up so more of their hair gets uh, you know, lit by the light. But most of the time I'm just hitting the back of the neck and then it just rolls off right here. And it also you can see this light is hitting the couch and further separating it from the background. Let me show you what that looks like. You see there, it's edging my shoulders, a little bit of my ears and my hair and the couch. Yeah, and I would also want to, you know, turn this into tungsten. I think it would look much better, but I need a big gel for that and I have that. Um, so you wanna be very aware of what your lights, lights do and for that, Always turn off your key light and make sure you dial it into taste. You can turn it up or down. Again, you can also have uh, both lights if you want to. You want to do that. You can have an edge light and a back, back light. Usually, you only pick one. Um, I honestly like the look of the back light much better. I don't know why, but uh, for some instances, maybe just you don't have the time. You, you set up a edge light and it's easier to set up. Uh, as opposed to the, the backlight, this requires rigging. You need a menace arm to extend it. I know professional gaffers are using Kino flows to rig up, you know, a big uh, Select 21, Select 31. That's labor intensive. And also you need a lot of resources to pull off something like that, especially if you have a wider shot. Uh, I know we, I, I personally, when I set up backlights, I typically they're for nails. Like I have an RE150. You can also set up like a, Aperture Mini 120D because those are super lightweight. They're LEDs. Oh, the Aperture Mini 20D is LED uh, and it's you can pull gels on it. Um, so those are the things you want to look out for whenever you're choosing your lights. Uh, By color, lightweight, it's much better if you can. Uh, the, however, with the softbox, it's a softer roll off. That's why the professional gaffers, they use bigger sources and they just control it with grids. Um, so it all depends, right, on, on the type of shoots you're involved in. 
Okay, uh, let me show you again one last time before we wrap it up. Um, that's the backlight. And this is the edge light. Both on. Now I'm going to turn off the background light. I'm going to turn on the key. And there it is. All right. So hopefully this helps you out in your film shoots. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. If you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.